In this video, I'll show you how to style RQI tabs component using slot recipes in Panda CSS. RQI is a headless component library that provides a rich set of accessible UI components for your design system, completely driven by state machines. I've gone ahead to install RQI React and we're going to use this now in our application. We'll start by importing the tabs component from RQI React. Next, we'll paste in some boilerplate code I copied over from RQI docs. Now based on this, we can see that the tabs component comes with different parts. We've got the root part that takes in all of the properties that control the tabs component. We've got the tab list that represents the list of tab triggers at the top there. And for each tab, we've got the tabs content, which renders the content for each respective tab. Now I've gone ahead to also apply a default value of home so we see the home tab activated by default. Due to the reset styles from Panda CSS, you see the tabs component looks pretty unstyled, but it works. Now let's go ahead to sprinkle some Panda CSS styles on this component. Based on the anatomy of the tabs component as shown in the RQI docs, we can see that the tabs component consists of several parts. We've got the root, which maps to the root component here. We've got the tabs list, which maps to the list one here. We've got multiple triggers for each tab, which maps to the trigger parts. And then finally, we've got the content, which maps to the content here. Now to style this correctly with Panda CSS, we'll start by creating an object of classes, which would hold every single styles for each part. We'll define the root part, passing in the CSS for the root part, and we'll do the same for every single part, the trigger, the content, and the list. Now, the next thing we'll do is to attach the classes to every single part. Starting with the root, we attach the classes of root, and for the tab list, we'll pick out the classes of list. For the triggers, we'll attach the trigger class name to them, and then for the content as well, we'll attach the content class names. Now, let's go ahead to write some styles to make the tabs component look pretty. We we'll start out by defining the root styles, giving it a background of white, a shadow of SM, which maps to a design token in Panda CSS, and a border radius or rounded of large, which also maps to a design token in Panda CSS. For the trigger, we we'll pass in some basic styles to style the padding on the X and Y axis, give it a bit of radius, and also add in cursor pointer. Panda CSS integrates nicely with RQI, and one key thing that we can do here is when the tab is selected, we want to apply font width of medium and background of grade 200. This works because RQI adds a data attribute to the component, and Panda CSS exposes a selector for us to style that code underscore selected. For the content, we give it a couple of padding styles and a border radius as well. And for the tabs list, we pass in padding on the X and Y axis. Now there you have it. We have a pretty functional tabs component that works pretty good with both the mouse and also the keyboard. Styling components this way is a good starting point when you're using Panda CSS. However, using slot recipes in Panda CSS allows us to define multiple variations for this tabs component. We'll start by importing a function called SVA from style system CSS. Next, we'll create a variable that holds the recipe. For now, let's call it tabs recipe. The next thing you do is to define the slots or the parts for that compound component. As with all recipes, you have to define the base styles. So the base style would include the default styles for every single part. In this case, I've gone ahead to just paste over all the styles we declared earlier and put it all into the base style. Next, we'll go ahead to replace the classes we defined earlier with the tabs recipe function call. This function call allows us to customize the different variants we defined for the tabs recipe. Now, what if we wanted to have different sizes for the tabs component, say medium and small? With the slot recipe approach, this is such a breeze. Let me show you how to do it. We'll start by defining the variants of this recipe. Now the variance will consider the size. The size would have two options, medium and small. For the medium size, we can style the trigger and give it the same styles we had earlier. Next, we'll create a small size. And for this small size, we would create a smaller padding for the trigger and also reduce the font size. We'll then go ahead to remove the styles or the padding styles attached to the trigger earlier because we're going to now control it with the size variant. As you can see, the tabs component looks broken. To fix this, we come in here and pass in a size of medium, and that gets us back to where we are. Now, this is the power of using slot recipes. 
because it allows us to define variations of, for the component. And for each variation, we have the ability to style each part of that slot recipe. We can also test out the small variant to see what that looks like. As you can see, the tabs trigger looks smaller. Now, what if you wanted to style the content to also look the same? All we have to do is to update the small size variant and target the content element, passing the font size as well to look small. And there you go, we have the small variant looking good. With slot recipes, you are able to define compound component with a simple API that allows you to create multiple variations for them with ease. Check out the Panda CSS docs for slot recipes, give it a shot and let us know what you think.